Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to review five really neat problems that involve altitude and, uh, and uh, hypotenuse theorems. If you did not uh, hear about the altitude and hypotenuse theorems, you can go listen to the lesson on the theorems and how we got to them on the altitude and hypotenuse theorems lesson video on Otten Math. Okay, let's take a look at the first problem. We need to find the length DE to the nearest tenth. So we're going to define DE as the value of x. All right, so we're going to use our altitude and hypotenuse theorem to figure out what AC is first. Okay, and I know that AC squared is going to be equal to AB times, it should be AD times AB. Let's just erase this because this is a small mistake. So I have <clears throat> AC squared is equal to AD times AB. So AC squared is equal to 4 times 4 plus 5, or 9. So AC squared is equal to 36. AC is equal to 6. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to find out that CD, right, CD is also going to be equal to 4 times 5. CD squared is going to be equal to 4 times 5. So CD is going to be equal to the square root of 20 where CD is going to be equal to 2 root 5. So I have this length here uh, as 2 root 5. So I was able to find out what AC is given AD and DB. And given uh, AD and DB, I'm also able to find out what CD is. I can also find out what CB is, but in this case, I don't need to know that uh, in order to prove what DE or X is. Okay, so now that I know what DC is, and I know what AC is, I can use that information to figure out what DC, I'm sorry, ED is going to be. So I know that AD, <clears throat> I have my angle bisector theorem, so the diagram is as shown, we're going to go back to our angle bisector theorem from a prior section, and I know that AD over AC is equal to DE, this length here, over EC. So again, by the angle bisector theorem, I can say that AD over AC is going to have the same ratio as DE over EC. And I want to figure out <clears throat> uh, what DE is, and I know what DC is. So we set up the relationship. I have 4 over 6, so AD over AC is equal to DE, or X, over, remember we figured out that DC was 2 root 5. So D, uh, CE is going to be 2 root 5 minus X. All right. We use cross multiplication, and I get 8 root 5 minus 4X is equal to 6X. I'm going to add 4X to both sides, and I get 8 root 5 is equal to 10X. Now X is equal to 4 root 5 over 5, and that's my answer. All right. So first we started, we had these two sections of the hypotenuse. We are able to find out what AC was. And then the, again, the two sections of the hypotenuse, we were able to find out what the altitude CD, the length of the altitude CD was. We defined DE as X. Uh, then we used the angle bisector theorem, knowing that EA bisects CAD. We were able to set up a proportion and then solve for X. Okay, next question. Prove that the product of the measures of the legs of a right triangle is equal to the product of the measures of the hypotenuse and the altitude to the hypotenuse. Okay, so prove that the product of the measures of the legs of a right triangle, so leg times leg, is equal to the product of the measures of the hypotenuse, C, times the altitude, H. So we want to prove that AB is equal to CH. All right, so let's figure out what we know. I have a squared. a squared is equal, remember, to c times y. I have b squared, and these are our altitude and hypotenuse theorems. b squared is equal to c times x. <clears throat> Therefore, a squared uh, times b squared is equal to cy times cx, or c squared times x times y. So a squared times b squared is equal to c squared times x times y. So that's a squared times b squared, uh, sorry, a, squ a times b is what we're looking for, but we know a squared times b squared is equal to c squared times xy. 
<clears throat> now we can also say that a squared times b squared is equal to c squared times h squared. Well, where do we get the h squared from? How can we say that a squared times b squared is equal to c squared times h squared? Well, I've said that a squared times b squared is equal to c squared times xy. We've shown that. x times y, right, uh, we've derived from the last portion of our altitude and hypotenuse theorems, which says that h squared, or the hypotenuse, is equal to one portion of the, I'm sorry, h squared, the altitude and hypotenuse, is each equal to one portion of the hypotenuse of the large triangle times the other portion of the hypotenuse <clears throat> uh, of that uh, larger triangle. So I can substitute in h squared for xy here, and I get a squared times b squared is equal to c squared times h squared. And if I take the square root of both of those values, I end up with a b, a times b is equal to c times h. All right, so we've just proven that a times b is equal to c times h. All right, that's problem number two, I believe. Moving on to the third problem. Given diagram is shown, find B, D. All right, well, we're going to define now A, B is X and D, B is Y. So we're going to use that information. First thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for, uh, we're going to solve for X. So I know that 6 squared A, A, D is equal to X times X plus 5. All right, so again, that, I believe that was the first Altitude on hypotenuse theorem. AD squared is equal to AB times AC. Or 6 squared is equal to X times X plus 5. Or 36 is equal to X squared plus 5X. We use our zero product property and factor the quadratic to see that we can factor it to X plus 9 and X minus 4, which gives us a result of negative 9 and positive 4. Since X cannot be a negative value, <clears throat> we see that X is going to be equal to 4. Now, given that x is equal to 4, I can figure out what y is, because y squared is equal to 4 times 5. y squared is equal to 4 times 5. Again, altitude and hypotenuse theorem. So y is going to be equal to the square root of 20. As we take the square root of y squared, square root of 20, or 2 root 5. OK, moving on to, I believe, our fourth uh, problem. Or maybe it's our fifth. Fourth problem. Okay, and the figure CD is the mean proportional between AD and BD. Find the arithmetic, geometric, and harmonic mean between each pair of lengths. So I believe I'm only going to do this for one pair of lengths. Um, and let's take a look at which one I'm going to choose. Okay, so uh, we're going to do a AM. So they're, we're given in the book different lengths uh, for AD and DB. So we're going to use uh, just from the A problem, the lengths that we're given for AD is 2 and DB is 8. So we want to find in the figure CD is a mean proportional between AD and BD. Find the arithmetic, geometric, and harmonic mean between each pair of lengths. So if we wanted to find the arithmetic mean, the arithmetic mean is just AD plus DB over 2. So 2 plus 8 over 2 gives us 5. And that gives us our arithmetic mean, um, which we call AM, as 5. So let's erase that. And we're now we're going to find the geometric mean between <clears throat> 2 and 8. So <clears throat> we take the geometric mean between 2 and 8. 2 over 8 is equal to, I'm sorry, 2 over x is equal to x over 8. x squared is equal to 16. So x is going to be equal to 4. So our geometric mean is going to be 4. Now last, we want to find the harmonic mean. And the harmonic mean is uh, defined as 2 <clears throat> over 1 over a plus 1 over b. So again, harmonic mean is 2 over 1 over a plus 1 over b. In this case, A is defined as this segment AD, and B is defined as this segment DB. Now, and this, this is explained, I believe, in the book. 
so I'm skipping a little bit uh, in, in terms of the definition to review. We get 2 over 1 over A, AD, plus 1 over B. So I see that 2 uh, harmonic mean is equal to 2 over, and now I've uh, changed the denominator of the first fraction uh, to make the denominators of these two fractions equal so I can add them together. So I have 2 over uh, 2 over 4 over 8 plus 1 over 8. So 1 over A is equal to 1 over 2, which is equal to 4 over 8, plus 1 over B, which is 1 over 8. Now I'm going to add these two fractions together, get 5 over 8. Uh, and let's erase this section here. So then I end up with 2 over 5 eighths. So when I divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction. So again, I'm going to rewrite this. Instead of 2 divided by 5 eighths, I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times 8 over 5. Or I can say 2 over 1 times 8 over 5, which gives me 16 over 5. And that's going to be my harmonic mean. I can also state that as 3.2. All right, last question. Given two positive numbers, A and B, prove that their arithmetic mean, which is 0.5 times A plus B, or half of the two values, is always greater than or equal to their positive geometric mean. Which is going to be the square root of AB. So we want, to, we want to figure out what the relationship is between a plus b over 2 and the square root of ab. All right. So <clears throat> if I say, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's square these two values. Because if I square these two values, then uh, in this case, and I'm saying a and b are positive numbers, right? So if I square them, a plus b over 2 squared will have the same relationship relative to the square root of AB squared as it will A plus B over 2 to the square root of AB. Right, so I'm going to square these two values, A plus B uh, over 2 squared uh, and the square root of AB squared. So it'll make it easier for us to deal with these values. So A, a plus B over 2 squared ends up being A squared plus 2AB plus B squared over 4. And we're still trying to figure out what that relationship is relative to the square root of AB squared, which is AB. So I can uh, now rewrite this as I multiply both sides by 4. I get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared has some relationship to 4ab. All right. So now, <clears throat> I subtract 4ab from both sides. And I end up with a squared minus 2ab plus b squared has some relationship now with 0. Because I've subtracted this 4ab from both sides, this right side now becomes 0. And I have a squared minus 2ab instead of plus 2ab. Plus b squared uh, it has some relationship with 0. Now, <clears throat> I, if I were to rewrite this as a, this is really uh, the square of the same value, uh, a minus b squared. Or we can say a perfect square. Uh, so a minus b squared is the same as a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And this value, a minus b squared, is always going to be greater than 0, or at least equal to 0. Um, and that is because any value squared is always going to be a positive number, or it will be 0. So it will be either greater than or equal to 0. So I can see then that my relationship between a plus b over 2 is always going to be greater than or equal to the square root of a times b. All right, sound pretty interesting. You can go back and replay this and uh, figure this one out again uh, if you just replay the recording. Uh, that's it for our problems for altitude and hypotenuse theorems. Uh, we got some more interesting topics when we talk about the Pythagorean theorem coming up in the next section of Otten Math.